Hi guys, this is Garrox2000, uh, Miss OJ, and uh, I'm going to be talking about something that I feel is incredibly controversial, but equally as important to both genders, or whatever gender you identify with. Hi guys, this is Garrox2000. Um, like I said, I'm going to be putting on my, fa my YouTube uh, account whatever the hell I want, and what I'm going to be doing today is uh, a rant about something that seems to fluster me and create a lot of um, contradicting conflagration within my own consciousness uh, about women. And um, the title of this is going to be Women Wonder Why or a Message to All Women. And, okay, so here I go. I'm a much better uh, writer than I am speaker, or at least I think I am because I haven't practiced enough anyhow. So this is what I got. I gotta talk to you guys about something important right now. It's making me seriously contemplate becoming gay due to the profuse and unrelenting confusion that it has accosted me with. Why is it that nearly all women want a guy who likes slash loves them for their metaphysical qualities such as personality, ambitions, fears, illusions, delusions, but then they dress while in public like naked sluts? I'm not sorry for being insensitive when I say this. I have a dick. I live in a city that is endlessly proliferating hypersexualism, Las Vegas, uh, onto me nearly every second of every day. Forgive me for my insincere lack of sympathy for something that just doesn't make sense whatsoever. For instance, day in and day out while I'm at the library on the UNLV school campus, I must see upwards of 70 between 90 women, no, 90, 70 between 90% of the women, uh, girls, whatever you want to call them, wear really skanky, provocative clothing like booty shorts, uh, stockings, or super short miniskirts. They are, and they are not only this, but they are so goddamn tight. So you can see every inch of the outline of the panties, uh, the said person is wearing, the, the boob um, configuration. Um, the remainder percentage of the women, um, you know, the, the, the tenor or thirty or so, um, wear these really tight shirts that have their, their boobs pulsating out of their shirts, so, you know, it leaves no imagination to what it looks like. It's right in your face, you know? Um, and, and their boobs are very vivacious in their animation when they're, you know, moving and walking and whatnot. Um, you know, and not only this, but some of these women wear low cut top shirts, so if you're just, you know, slightly taller than you can, like, see down their shirt and you can see everything, you know? So even if you are the slightest bit taller than you, then you see their tits in great detail, you know? I've seen a uh, nipple on several occasions of this, uh, of this, this kind of sort, um, but also what Chuck Norris's pubic, puberty, uh, yeah, pubic hair might look like if it were chest hair. Scary motherfucking shit is what that is. I had to medicate on sedatives while in solitary confinement for four weeks after seeing that shit. It was fucking scary. And then, then there are the girls that don't wear shirts that completely cover their tummy and you can just begin to imagine the runway of their pubic hair. Um, and it's basically, you know, being glamorized and advertised once again right in your face. So I do not apologize wholeheartedly for thinking about practically 100% of the time uh, sex, as the girls around me appear to be easy sluts. Do women not know this in, the, in this city, let alone the fucking world? I'm not saying you should uh, not dress a particular way. I'm not advocating that whatsoever. I'm not even saying you should, you know, dress conservatively or more abusively to women's civil rights, forcing them to wear a hijab or a burqa, uh, clothing that, you know, in the Middle East, women don't have a choice to wear that's forced upon them. Um, the interesting thing about that in and of itself is that, you know, the, the Middle Eastern women say that uh, the women here in the West are exploited. The difference is, is the women here can decide how they want to, to express themselves um, through their personality via, you know, clothing and uh, apparel and whatnot. You know. Yeah, women over there are coerced to dress uh, in a particular way. And here, you know, they, they wear provocative, skanky, goddess, illustrious clothing. And, um, you know, and yet the women here are suppressed. I, I mean, it just, it, it doesn't get any more contradictory than that. Only pro-lifers that say women cannot decide to have abortions by their choice are suppressing, and those people aren't pro-life folks. They're anti-women, as George Carlin said. We have a lot of sick bastard politicians that want to reduce our fairer sex to nothing more than sex slave symbols, whores, and like paralyzed, like a paralyzed will of a corpse. Women are so much more than that. I relay and relate to what Tupac said on this uh, in his song, Keep Your Head Up, entirely. And this is what he said. Please don't cry, dry your eyes, never let up, forgive, but don't forget, girl, keep your head up. 
And when he tells you you ain't nothing, don't believe him. And if he can't learn to love you, you should leave him. Because, sister, you don't need him. And I ain't trying to gas you up. I just call him like I see him. You know, it makes me unhappy. You know, it makes me unhappy. What's that when brothers make babies and leave a young mother to be a pappy? And since we all came from a woman, got our name, got our name from a woman, got our game from a woman, I wonder why we take from our women, why we rape our women, do we hate our women? I think it's time we kill for our women, time to heal for our women, be real to our women. And if we don't, we'll have a race of babies that will hate the ladies that make the babies. And since a man can't make one, he has no right to tell a woman when and where to create one. So, returning back to my central thesis. So, yeah, I'll admit it without grace. I think of having sex violently, violating sloppy sex with these girls right on the fucking computer desk where, you know, I was, I was typing this as I was thinking this. You know, do girls know how little it takes to make a man horny? The iota prerequisites needed to, uh, to brew the perfect horny sex storm to want to make somebody chronically masturbate about 28 times a day are next to none. The, it could be anything from a whiff of perfume, the ke a chemical pheromone that's emitted from all human beings, uh, a look, a glance of the leg, a hug, you know, all catalysts before mad aggressive predictability ensues. Look, women, if you want to tolerate, if you want a man to tolerate and at the very best respect you as a person, equal in whatever else you feel is transcendent enough to fill in the blank with, realize that men are very sexual creatures. And men as a whole respond primarily through uh, animalistic urges, such as sex drive, and very seldom contemplate soon thereafter the medical thing, metaphysical things I uh, aforementioned, you know, like personality, soul, depth of the individual. If you want a man to love you for more than a quick fuck, tuck, and release, be forgiving if a self-admitted pervert such as myself has the screaming urge to slap your ass and cup your cheek ever so belligerently when you grace yourself with your seductively illustrious presence, you know? You'd be hard-pressed and outright horrified to know that maybe even a great deal of your, you know, your, uh, your guy friends jack off to your pictures all over Facebook, you know? So knowing that, what will you do? I mean, I'll sit, I'll still sit here uh, day in and day out contemplating not truculently raping some of these babes that passed by me, although I find my scholarly research into the uh, quantum occult infinitely more appealing than sex uh, or appeasing the base urges of my being in, and in the long run, you know, but uh, all the same, this is just my disposition on the matter. In the end, follow your light, whatever that is, and find your happiness for it is in this life, every single... You know, so... I I'm sorry I keep having to edit this out. My camera is really ghetto. I need to get a, a much better... Uh, improved memory stick that has maybe about 32 gigabytes. I have like eight, so I'm ghetto like that. Um, so anyway, what I was what I was trying to say was, you know, my finalization, my recapitulation was follow your light and whatever that is, and find your happiness and fight for it in this life. Every single one of us is deserving of whatever that perceived happiness is. For you are the biophotonic one. Um, I'll talk about what that means to me in a later video, but essentially, uh, on a quantum physical level, metaphysical level that's imperceptible to the eye, thanks to the electromagnetic spectrum, you are, as, as are literally all matter and creation, made from biophotons. Bio meaning life, photon meaning uh, essentially uh, light particles. And every human being emits them, and this goes by many different names, you know, it goes by electromagnetic biofield, the aura, the um, chakra, energy emission system, there's many different names for it. The point is it's well documented, it's very ancient, and very uh, very uh, drenched in antiquity in its um, value, but uh, some, I'll talk about it another time. Anyway, blessings be, God of wisdom, the occult scientist, sciences, grand master of the scribes, both, and uh, I'll give you guys update statuses as, as this comes, okay? See you later.